We're in Clemson, South Carolina, and it is the first week of April 2018. These are some cover crop demonstration plots, um, and we're going to walk through and make some comments. Um, there's this is a uh, um, uh, rye, some triticale, some oats, and as you can see, some of the differences in these. And then as we walk down over here. We see a couple of standard ryegrasses, um, diploid ryegrass, tetraploid ryegrass. This is a perennial ryegrass. This is Maroa, Italian ryegrass. This is a low boy, um, uh, cover crop ryegrass. One of the things I want to point out is if you look at the root structure on low boy, although it may be short, the roots are quite uh, quite significant and I'll give that as a comparison to another one of the other rye grasses here this is a, this is a um, uh, diploid that pretty tall but the roots uh, about similar type root structure and yet we have the advantage of not having extra top growth um, uh, to kill so next to the uh, low boy um, is uh, a couple other ryegrasses. You can see the differences. As we walk over here, we're going to look at some uh, winter peas. Um, on the end is Wyndham. This is a, a survivor that looked real nice in these plots. It might be an early, early one. Um, uh, next to that is uh, Bio Winter. That is uh, next to Austrian raw and Austrian coated. Um, these uh, these look to be pretty equivalent um, as far as maturity goes uh, and survivability, which they really didn't have much of a problem with. Although it was commented that these looked like they were they were um, uh, they really didn't wake up here just until recently. Now, one thing that's kind of interesting observation if you look at at a legume source. Um, see, here's your winter peas, and then we're going to go up and we're going to look at vetch, um, and uh, and then um, the lancet clover and crimson clover. So look at the maturity and timing. This first vetch is AU merit. Right behind it is um, common uh, hairy vetch. Significant difference. The AU merit uh, really is coming on strong. We expect that it's a two week or uh, uh, two week earlier than other vetch, um, and it uh, it's growing very nice. Next to that, there are three balanças. That's fixation balanza, viper balanza, and taipan balanza. And if you notice, out of the three, that the viper has the most growth, the taipan the second most and the fixation uh, third. That may be a maturity issue. One thing kind of interesting is that the taipan is already flowering, so we can um, make some assumptions of that being a maturity issue. Next to that's frosty bursine clover. Frosty looks real nice in these plots. Zulu arrow leaf clover. Uh, arrow leaf, uh, this one just didn't look good from the start, so it may have been a, a seed issue. There are three um, crimson clovers here. This is Kentucky Pride, which looks really good in this trial. AU Sunrise also looks nice, and that's an earlier variety. You can see the maturity, it's already it's jumping up. And uh, Dixie, Dixie's coming on uh, uh, strong as well. Behind this, uh, the radishes, and um, these were planted late. Uh, there really wasn't much performance in these radishes. This soil is rock hard, um, uh, and so even the, soil, uh, the radishes that were dug up uh, for the demonstration um, were, uh, were pretty small. You can see the survivors are also uh, real small, so mostly a timing issue. This is, uh, this is dwarf SX rape, so you can see, uh, see the rape there. Uh, that looks like that's doing well. Um, 
And then adjacent to that is a uh, mix. This is Ray's Crazy Mix. Um, and uh, that looks like that's performed well and, and uh, doing, what, uh, doing what that's intended to do. Um, there's a Trit Plus, it's a Triticale um, mix adjacent to that. There's, this is Will Ladino Clover, renovation white clover, the renovation, these were planted in the fall. The renovation's coming on nice and strong, and what we would what we'd expect. Next to renovation is Kakariki. Um, a lot of weed pressure, but um, the Kakariki, uh, you know, where the plants are, it looks like it's coming on strong um, uh, as well. Uh, this is a, a red clover here, and this is alfalfa, ever, ever more alfalfa. Um, one thing that was discussed in the in the presentation was that the use of alfalfas should uh, be increased in the in the southeast because they uh, they really do have a place. And then adjacent to that is just a uh, um, uh, an orchard grass a fescue and an orchard grass um, uh, variety unknown. On that. So if you're looking over overall for the um, Piedmont region of South Carolina and a and adjacent, um, here's the value of the carbon crops. These are uh, these are your legumes. Lots of nitrogen right there. Lots of free nitrogen. Lots of free protein if you're looking at uh, uh, use for forage. And then um, uh, again, if you look at these, you see you see the very far um, that uh, you have a rye, and you have triticale, and you have oats, and then you have annual rye grasses see a timing um, sequence so if you need early forage um, then that value is probably gonna uh, be obtained mostly with the um, rye then triticale then oat and ryegrass